What's up guys, Nick here. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how I have started to tie my bottom fishing rigs, and it's one of the cheapest and easiest ways that I have personally found to tie them, so I wanted to share it with you guys. So, let's go ahead and get into it. What's up, if you're new here, my name's Nick and I do a bunch of fishing related videos and content such as how to's like this one. So if that's something that you're interested, make sure to hit that subscribe button. And if you do find any value in today's video, please give me a thumbs up. It would really help me out and I would really appreciate it. So this grouper rig is one that I've modified a few different ways to just try and come up with an easy and cost effective way to tie bottom fishing rigs, mainly because one, I wanted to waste as little time as possible retying rigs if you get broken off, but also the least expensive way of tying grouper rigs because as we know, fishing is expensive. So if you're able to cut cost and save time while fishing, well, that's a win-win in my books. So let's go ahead and get into the overview of the actual rig so I can show you what it's all about. It does consist of what you would typically have on your bottom fishing setup. What you have is the main line, going to your leader. Then you have your mono leader going to your snap swivel, which goes to the loop knot that we tie, which then goes to another four to five foot piece of monofilament leader to your hook. Now, as you guys can see, this really isn't too different from your typical bottom fishing setup because you are tying your line to a swivel with your weight above the swivel. The only difference is instead of a regular barrel swivel, you're using a snap swivel, and that is one of the keys to this whole fishing setup. What the snap swivel allows you to do is just have a easy and quick way to make a bunch of pre-made rigs that you can then just hook up whenever you break off. So for instance, if this over here is your main line, you have your weight above the swivel, and with the snap swivel, let's just say you get broken off. Well, you take your pre-made rig that has the loop and you just attach it to your snap swivel, snap it, and then you are good to go. Now, one of the main benefits of this is just the time. If you just saw how quickly I took this leader off of my Cuban yo-yo, attached it to the snap swivel, it was a matter of seconds, which if you're in a hot bite, every second counts. And to be able to just take my leader, simply put it on the snap swivel, close it up, and call it a day and throw back down, that is an incredible amount of time saved rather than having to tie to your swivel and then tie to your hook and then get set up but that takes a little bit more time than what we have. And like I said, every second definitely counts when you're fishing and in a hot bite. Now, another benefit of this particular rig is the cost savings. While we, we used to do is tie the pre-made rigs with an actual barrel swivel, this new way of tying them literally is just a hook and the leader itself with a loop knot. So by doing that, you actually are cutting out not only the material, but the cost of buying a bunch of barrel swivels. And I know what you're gonna say, well, tying a loop knot as opposed to tying a snug knot to a barrel swivel will weaken the overall rig. But I will say, since using this rig, we have never broken the loop knot. We have only ever broken off on this part of the actual leader material. So close to the hook, a little bit below the hook, we have never broken the actual loop that is attached to the swivel. Now, if you guys know of a cheaper way to make a grouper rig, leave that down in the comments below. I'd really like to know, and especially if it can save me some money, I would really appreciate that. But I really do think it is one of the cheapest ways to make a grouper rig, and it's also fast and convenient, which to me, like I said, is a win-win. And if you can save time and money while fishing, then that is one of the best ways to go. All right, so now that you know why that is one of my favorite ways to tie my bottom fishing rigs, let's go ahead and dive into actually tying it so you guys can see exactly how it's done. Okay, so for all intents and purposes, I am going to assume that uh, you already have your main line attached to your shock leader via like an FG knot or something like that, and that you already have your weight, that you already have your weight on your setup. So you've got your main line attached to your leader 
and you have your weight above where you're going to tie the swivel. Now with this, you're just going to have a uni knot tied to the swivel. And again, it's a snap swivel. I'll show you guys how I tie the uni knot. And then this is one thing that you can just keep set up on your bottom fishing rig at all times. That way, whenever you go out, you're already ready. You just have to attach one of your rigs to the snap swivel. I am using this yellow fluorescent line just because it's a little bit easier to see in the video. And what you're going to do is you're just going to take out a piece of it, which you know, it can be anywhere from four feet to 10 feet, depending upon what you're fishing for, depending upon uh, the type of species that you're targeting, and just depending upon how maybe spooky the fish are. What we typically do is just grab kind of like an arm's length of leader material. Typically you're using anywhere from 40 to 80 pound, up to 100 pounds sometimes, depending upon the structure. And we always use monofilament just because it is a lot cheaper than fluorocarbon. And then what you're going to do is you're going to start by doing the surgeon's loop. I do a three turn surgeon's loop knot in order to tie the actual portion that you attach to your snap swivel. In order to do that, all you do is you will make a, you will double over the line like this. Give yourselves plenty of room because depending upon how heavy the monofilament is that you're using, uh, it could be kind of difficult to, to do the actual loops. So once you have it over on itself like this, you'll do three overhand knots. So you'll go ahead and take both sides here. I just like to use my fingers as a guide and you will make a little six out of it. And then you'll take this portion and you're going to go through three times. So one, two, and three. And like I said, you wanna give yourselves plenty of room just because it can get pretty difficult to tie with monofilament, especially if you're up in the 80 to 100 pound range. And you wanna to notice too how all of these are nice and coiled in the same direction and they're not overlapping or anything like that. And then what you will do is you will pull on the tag end, make sure you pull both of these, and then you'll also pull on the new loop that you just formed. And then you will pull pretty tight. And then what I like to do is just kind of open the loop like that to make sure it's nice and cinched down. And then you will go ahead and cut off your tag end Okay, so then you have a nice loop to attach to your snap swivel. Okay, and then on the end that goes to the hook, I just do a simple uni knot. Uh, sometimes I will also do a snail knot depending upon if I have an octopus hook or not, but for the most part we just use a uni knot because it's really easy to tie and it's really strong. And so for the uni knot, you just go through And what I like to do is I always like to hold the hook or swivel or whatever it is I'm tying in my left hand and then do all of the work with my right hand just because I am right handed. So you will put it through and then for the uni knot you're going to take this, this tag end, you're going to go down and around and again you'll make another six just like that. So you have the tag end, and all we did was we went down and around to make a six. And then all you do with this is you will put the tag end behind, whoops, behind and through. I like to do anywhere from three to five times. There's really, um, some debate on how many turns, but three to five is good. Whatever you can, whatever you can get in. Three to five is fine. So I just did one, and you'll do another wrap around two, and then another wrap around three, and then again you can see how those are nice and spiraled around those double lines. And then what you're going to want to do is you will just grab the tag end along with the hook and you'll just pull those 
away from each other nice and slow and you'll see that nice little coil begin to form. You don't want to pull it too tight because you do want to be able to have some um, give whenever you pull to cinch it down on here. But then what you'll do is you'll let go of the tag in, you'll grab the main line and just go ahead and pull, pull, pull. And then it's going to cinch right up on the hook. And what you do after that is you just will cut your tag in. This is again weird line. Okay, and then that's your rig. And as you can see, you have the full rig here. You have your hook to your mono and a loop. So you can just easily attach it to your snap swivel. And then you're ready to fish. If you get broken off, all you do, take that off with the snap swivel, grab another rig from your Cuban yo-yo, put it on, snap, and you're good to go. And just to show you guys what this looks like on a real rod, as you can see here, I have my Penn Spin Fisher 8000. It is on a Pen Carnage 2 rod. It's a really great combo. I'll leave the gear set up down below. That way you guys can take a look at it. But we have that same setup on this particular rod. So as you guys can see, I have my mono shock leader tied to a, I think this is a five ounce weight with my snap swivel right here. And then all you'll do Whenever you get out to your spot or whenever you're setting up your rods and reels for that day, you just take the loop knot, you put your snap swivel on it, and snap it, and there you go. You are good to go. So I hope you guys did enjoy that video. If you did, please make sure to hit that like button for me. I'd really appreciate it. And if you have any tips or tricks on your specific grouper rig setups, make sure to leave those in the comments below. I would love to hear how you guys set up your grouper rigs, especially if you can find a faster or cheaper way. I'm all about it. Make sure you leave that below for me. If you wanna see more content like this, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And until the next video, I hope you're able to get out on the water and catch some fish.